If you're an English speaker, hello and welcome to a new episode of Insights Inside. And if you're new here, um, let me introduce myself. My name is Shelia Stevens, and usually I'm speaking in German about the three principles with my colleagues Sandra Heim, Sylvia Katil, and Leah Vandley. Today I have the honor and the privilege to take the reins, and I'm just by myself, and we're going to be looking together from my backyard to wherever you are um, in the direction of the topic of where to find all the questions that your heart has. Where do you find all your heart's questions? How do you get them answered? So stick around while I let the Germans know what's going on, that we're taking a, a subtle different route than we usually take. And um, we'll get on with that English episode in just a moment. Hallo und herzlich willkommen. Wenn du deutschsprachig bist, willkommen zu einer neuen Episode von Insights Inside. Wenn du neu hier bist, ähm, ich würde mich gern vorstellen. Mein Name ist Shalia Stevens. Ich bin Amerikanerin. Ich lebe in Deutschland. Normalerweise ist dieser Podcast ähm, wird, wird es gedreht in Deutsch ähm, für ein deutschsprachiges Publikum zusammen mit meinen Kolleginnen Sandra Heim, Sylvie Katil und Lea Wernley. Und heute bin ich alleine wieder mal im Garten und drehe eine Episode für dich auf Englisch. Das ist eine Abweichung von unserem normalen Vorgehen, aber ich hoffe, es wird dir gefallen. Und zwar geht es um das Thema, wo du die Antworten findest für die Fragen deines Herzens. Also wenn du Fragen hast über dein Leben, dich wunderst, wie es weitergehen sollte, könnte, bleib dran, diese Episode wird bestimmt spannend für dich sein. Und wieder mal den Hinweis, wenn du Englisch nicht so doll verstehen kannst, wenn das nicht deine beste Sprache ist, ich würde mich so freuen, wenn du trotzdem bleibst und einfach dich zurücklehnst, entspannst, um, gar nicht so sehr auf die Sprache achtest, sondern auf das Gefühl, das vermittelt wird und sei neugierig und überrascht, was das mit dir macht. Um, da ist eine, eine Kraft und eine Magie in dem Gefühl, um, was die Worte eigentlich weit hinausgeht. Also herzlich willkommen. Uh, wir sehen uns am Ende der Episode für eine kleine deutsche Nachricht, bevor du gehst. Hello and welcome back to a little talk from my yard, or as we say in Germany, from my garden. Um, it's a little bit unpredictable out here. Um, the neighbors are still working on their house and I hear them hammering and drilling over there, but um, yeah, we're gonna do what we can. So today I wanna talk about the fact that all the answers that your heart are looking for are within you. That's a really beautiful statement, but also it's a statement that I didn't understand for a really long time. I remember when I first became a coach, started my coach training back in 2008 and um, finished my degree in 2010 in Vienna, Austria. And I thought it was my job to give my clients answers or if not that, that we needed to really think about their questions, like get things from their head onto paper, um, intellectualize, rationalize, categorize, eliminate, come up with some sort of direction from well really out of their out of their personal thinking and when people would say everything that you need was in within you 
I'd be like, yeah, right. <laughs> if that were, if that were true, we would never have to have conversations with other people, get advice from mentors, work with a coach, um, Google things, like whatever, right? Like I, I thought that was true to a point. And today, I know that it is true. It's just true. All the answers that your heart is looking for, literally, they are to be found within you. And that doesn't matter if your heart's question is orienting yourself new in your in your business, or if your heart's question is whether to stay or go from a relationship, or if your heart's question is whether to give your horse medicine or not, or whether your heart's question is to go on that trip or stay home. Um, The big questions, the medium-sized questions, the little questions. What to do next? Um, but maybe it's a good idea to make a, a discrepancy at this point. And I, I used the word in the beginning, um, your heart's question. Now, this is just a metaphor, right? That your heart could have a question. <laughs> but where I'm pointing to is the difference when a question truly arises within us A, curio a curiosity, um, a wondering, um, uh, a like, hmm, I don't know, like uh, looking, looking into the unknown and just like being like, hmm, yeah, I wonder, I wonder what's going to come to me on that. Do you, do you feel the feeling of those questions arising from in you, from a deeper place, from a calmer place when, when you've got not so much on your mind or when your personal thinking is maybe not so interesting at the moment? Those, those heart questions or heart curiosities, hmm, they, they, they come with um, they come with a certain feeling, and they're they're a different feeling than the question of our minds, right? So when I say minds, I'm not I'm not speaking about the principle of mind, I'm speaking about the mind as we use it in the English language, the the intellectual mind, our our computer brain. And the questions of our intellectual mind, our computer brain, they have oftentimes a different quality in the feeling, right? They're oftentimes questions that the brain comes up with. And they feel oftentimes like important, like I need to answer that question. If I don't, I'm not okay. Our intellectual mind will ask us questions that feel urgent, like they need to be answered right away. Otherwise, we're not gonna be okay. Otherwise, we can't move forward. Otherwise, 
you hear that word otherwise. When the rational brain poses questions, they're often repetitive questions. One of the questions that I used to have in my in my life as a business owner, just a little business, or just a one person coaching business with a few virtual assistants was always like the question, what should I do next in my business? What's the next offer I should make? Is it need to be a high priced offer, a low price offer? How am I gonna price it? What should I do to, to market it? Now see, when you listen to those questions, they sound like kind of good questions, right? For someone who has a small online business and who's trying to get clients and seems like questions that anybody might ask themselves and that need to be answered in a, in a type of situation like that. And that may be true, you wanna have a price that you can tell your clients. It's a good thing if you have an offer, if you're trying to be in business, I'm not, I'm not questioning that. The problem was that my, my rational mind kept repetitively asking me those questions again and again and again and again, you see? So the first six or seven years of my business before I came to this understanding, my brain would be constantly asking me those questions again and again. Where are we gonna go next with the business? What's the next step? What's the next offer? How much is it? How are we gonna get the people? It's just constant. And it was a nagging, urgent feeling every time that that question would come up and I would, I would run out and I would try to get an answer for it. I'd think about it a lot. I would talk to my mastermind buddies about it a lot. I would go pay a high price coach. I can't even tell you. I mean, it's almost embarrassing to say how many, how much money I, I sunk in, in coaching and mentoring with business gurus trying to get those questions answered every time they would come up you know, because I'd answer them, I'd make the offer, I'd make the prize, I'd go and try to get the clients. It would work most of the time, sometimes it didn't. But even if it would work and I had success, it would just start over again and again and again. And I was literally turning in circles, not recognizing the quality of the feeling that those questions brought with them, right? And it didn't occur to me that those type of questions might not need answering. The questions of our, our heart, they feel, they just feel different. That's all, that's all I can really say about it. And you'll, you'll, you'll look for yourself in your life where you have questions going going on just feel feel into the, the question the quality of the feeling that that question brings up in your in your experience and notice are you in the feeling of your personal thinking and the thing your personal thinking is doing is posing questions that don't need answered? Or are you in the feeling of life? And in a, in a human life, there can be questions of the heart, right? Yesterday I was, um, sitting in the living room with my husband and I think I told you on the last podcast episode that his father is in the hospital in Nuremberg and he had just gotten home from from Nuremberg he was visiting his mom 
and he hadn't been home for 24 hours. And he started getting the heart question, should I go back? Should I go turn around and go right back? He had talked to his mom and noticed she was just not, not in a good place. And he felt he might be more needed there than, than here. And I said, well, to him, you know, he had, he had been planning to go for like a, a hike with a friend with the dogs. And I said, why don't you just go on that hike, you know, a couple hours, come back home and see where you are. Is that question still there? And if it is, you know, what can you, what can you see about it? And when he came back, he, he still had the question, but actually the question had turned into a knowing. He knew to go. He felt he needs to pack his bags, get in the car and go. It was the right thing to do from his inner wisdom was the uncomfortable thing to do. Turn right back around, pack all your bags back up, try to do a, a remote job from your parents' house, from the dining room table, um, on all your business meetings with your bank colleagues, while your mom's in the other room, you know, constantly asking you if you want lunch. <laughs> it's the uncomfortable thing to do, but it was the thing he knew to do. And his mind, his, his rational mind didn't like that discomfort or that, that, you know, that it was the uncomfortable thing to do. And it kept saying, should I really go? Maybe I don't need to go. Maybe it's okay if I, if I stay here. But the feeling of that it was off. He could feel it. His heart answer to his heart question was go. And that's the really cool thing about this understanding. When we start to become more aware, more conscious of being in the feeling of our personal thinking or being in the feeling of life, like of our heart space. And again, that's just a metaphor. It's just a way of talking about it. When our mind settles down, we just feel much more easily the, the yes or no, the stop or go. And it's usually not like the big thing, you know? We had a client a couple of months ago, really sweet man really good man. And he was, his rational mind was asking him the question, do I even really want a new relationship? Do, do am I someone who, who wants to be in a relationship? I'm sabotaging all my relationships with partners. Maybe it's not even something that I want. That's another way that the rational mind puts a costume onto personal thinking. It looks like a really important question, right? But the hard questions are, they're usually just concerned with one next step. Oh, I like this person. Do I want to go on a date with them? Yeah, yeah, I do. Heart, heart questions are rarely concerned with long-term big decisions. Almost never, actually. So 
So what gets in the way of us hearing our heart questions and our heart answers? That's just when we're when we're busy minded, when we're when we're too innocently distracted with our personal thinking. That's the most beautiful thing about doing this job as a transformative coach, as a mentor is, you know, you kind of put yourself out of work in a way <laughs> if you're doing a good job because when people start to realize that they don't have to listen to their, their busy thinking and they start to settle down, they start to be more in life and they start to feel that that true north, that real inner navigation system that's built right into us. That stop and go, yes, no, or I don't know. And they don't need to go to a coach anymore, usually. They don't need to go to the next training or the next mentoring course even in the most difficult of situations. They know if they get still, if they can, if they get the grace of that, they can go within. And life, life will give them an insight. An answer. You know, either, either a very practical answer to a practical next step for here in this blood and bones human life, or it could be an insight to a higher level of consciousness that where the ghost is, is raising its consciousness, like even more deeply understanding who we really are and how we work. Yeah. And that's the, the coolest thing. You know, you've got it within you. And, um, and some stuff you can just go, you can just go Google. <laughs> and why I say that is because you know, there are just some games we're playing in life where you can look all day with inside yourself and you just might not find an answer to it. But I, what, what I had to think about was um, <laughs> the other day in the kitchen, suddenly I was, I was just feeding the dogs and I was washing out a, one of their bowls and all of a sudden my bare feet, I could feel like water just <laughs> filling up like the kitchen floor and I'm standing in water and there had been like a clogged pipe and then um, it, it broke open in one area and it just started pouring out onto the floor and I had no idea what to do I had no experience with pipes I'm not like a, a person who works with their hands or like you know, I do computer stuff. That's my thing. It's good in those cases if you have a plumber. <laughs> in my case, I had I had Mira, my, our cleaning lady. She she's good with her hands, and she spent quite a bit of try, time trying to help me get it fixed. And she got it just to the point where it would hold long enough until the plumber could get there. Like the game of plumbing, it's kind of cool if you, you learn some of the certain things, not necessarily any amount of going inside yourself is going to present you those skills in that moment. And that's true for a lot of games we play in life. But I guarantee you, you're going to get the answer who to call. <laughs>
or if you needed to learn it, you'd get the answer where to go look for that information. Yeah. But isn't that just, isn't that just hopeful? Like all the answers and insights that you need for your life, for living your human life are on tap. We were doing a course, Leah and I, a couple of um, months ago with this um, very animated, charismatic, super intelligent Pakistani woman who lives in England. She was um, we were in one of her course learning how to how to set up a membership site because we wanted to create one. And I knew how to do it technically, but I didn't know how what, what's modern, what's up to date? How do you how do you set that up? How do you create a good retention? Like what are what is what is the best practice at the moment? And she was really smart. Her name's Bushra, this lady we, we learned from. Uh, we got a recommendation to go there. And she was one of the one of the models for the membership was a brain on tap. <laughs> so for those of you who are not native English speakers, that something's on tap just means like like beer on tap. You go to a pub and you pull the lever and it just comes out of the faucet. It's just, you turn the lever, you get the beer. You turn the lever, you get the beer. Beer on tap, brain on tap. In that case with the membership, it was like your coach is there and you can turn on the lever and get information from that coach. And where, where I'm pointing today is like, you've got wisdom on tap. <laughs> Just pull the lever. And you have access to answers and insights for your life as a human and spiritual being. It's really true. And you can go talk to anybody you want. You can have a conversation with your wife like Heiko had with me yesterday. Should I stay or should I go? But actually, you're so independent, you know, in you, he knew in him. We rarely, if not ever, need that confirmation. It's just the way humans interact with the all oneness through the conversation with others, really. Yeah. So that's all I've got to say today about it. <laughs> See the next time in our little garden talk. I think there's one more call in this little series. Till then, bye. I really hope that you enjoyed this episode of Insights Inside in English today. Keep a lookout for further episodes, special episodes that we create in the English language in future. We'll let you know um, when that happens via email. So be sure to get on our mailing list for that. Für die Deutschsprachigen unter euch, ich hoffe, dass die Episode dir heute gefallen hat, dass du in das Gefühl gekommen bist, dass ich auch gefühlt habe, während ich gesprochen habe. Ich hoffe, dass du für dich hast was mitnehmen können, ganz egal, ob du Englisch hervorragend verstehst oder gar nicht so gut. Ich freue mich, wir freuen uns, dass du dabei bist und wir hören uns bei einer nächsten neuen Episode von Insights Inside. Bis dahin, tschüss.